Hey, charcuterians. Have we used that greeting yet? If not, we're doing it now. It's happening. Andrew Fantasia here with an update on Marvel United Multiverse because the Kickstarter went live yesterday. As of time of this recording, it went live on Wednesday, January 18th. And to the shock of maybe two people on planet Earth, it met its goal in 14 minutes. That's right, it went live at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 100% of its goal was reached at 3.14 p.m. That's what we in the industry call cha-ching. I'm not even in the industry, what am I talking about? I do a totally different thing for a living. So anyway, I'm excited, you're probably excited, that's why you clicked on this video. Now, I want to talk about what we have learned so far, just, you know, less than 24 hours into this two and a half week campaign. Obviously, if you've been following along with us here on Digital Charcuterie, the big thing for me is my big wish list of characters I wanted to see. You can watch that video in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. We're going to be tracking throughout the campaign to see how many of those characters we can check off the list. So let's take a look right now where the campaign stands and what we've unlocked so far. Okay, so first things first, the uh, the bonus characters that you get with the core box. Last time during X-Men, you got the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and this time we're getting the Wrecking Crew. Yes, this is exactly how I pictured them showing up. Same kind of thing. We got Bulldozer, we got Piledriver, we got Wrecker, we got the fourth guy whose name I don't remember off the top of my head, but you can see him right here. The Wrecking Crew that work together as a unit. It's exactly how I pictured them, and here they are. We got them. And are they on my list? Yes, they are. ka -ching. we can cross one off. Then of course there's the expansion that everybody knows about, the coming of Galactus, which also comes with a bonus Kickstarter character, which I believe all the expansions are going to do that. They're gonna come with a bonus character uh, that won't be in the retail versions ish and the one that is included with the coming of galactus who will probably show up in the stretch goal box is iron lad so we have another variant of kang but you know what even though i'm on the side of i don't really care for variants and alts i just want fresh characters that we haven't had yet period iron lad works for me and here's why because he's so different looking. He's not just Kang in a different outfit, even though he is technically Kang in a different outfit. He's a whole different kind of character. He's a hero. He's a young Avenger, which means he's part of this other team entirely, which means we'll probably be getting all the young Avengers at some point. It's different enough that I'm like, hey, I'm happy. Iron Lad. He was not on my list, but he is most welcome in their roster of characters. Another interesting thing that I learned here that I don't remember hearing when the Simon people did their big Galactus reveal, but in this Galactus box, you're getting even more bang for your buck. Because yes, you can face Galactus as a boss, and his heralds are there. You can face all four heralds as individual villains without Galactus, right? So each one is their own villain. And the thing I didn't know until the campaign launched is you can also face the four heralds as one chunk, just like the Wrecking Crew or the Sinister Six. So you can choose to fight Galactus, Airwalker, Nova, Fire Lord, Terax, or the Heralds, which means there are six games in this one box, making it a value that puts the Apocalypse box to shame as far as I'm concerned. And I'm more and more glad I didn't by the Apocalypse box. So I'm looking forward to seeing the Heralds, how they work together, they got their own villain sheet. It looks groovy. But now it's time for Stretch Goal City Population Us. I was kind of like a frothing madman yesterday because I had to go to work at around 3.30. So periodically between classes at work, I was checking my phone to see what new Stretch Goals were coming out. And they were just hitting hard with so many great characters. And the beauty of it is there's characters that I was chomping at the bit for, and then characters that I didn't expect to see, and then other characters where I was like, who? And I think that's the beauty of these campaigns. The first one we got was Corsair, and he is definitely on my list. And the thing about Corsair is when I put him on my list, I was not expecting to see him. I really wasn't. It was literally just because I needed to fill out a campaign box that I had in my list, an expansion that was like an Annihilus expansion, right? So. I thought, okay, who's cosmic? Who fights Annihilus? Who fights up out in space? Corsair just came to mind. I know him from the cartoon and stuff. So I thought, let me just put Corsair in there because he's a cool space pirate. Why not? I did not expect to see him. I definitely did not expect him to be first. And I absolutely did not expect him to just be the first of four 
star jammers that are coming in this stretch gold box. More on them later. Let's go chronologically. The next character to be revealed is the hero Black Knight, which is very exciting because that's just a great looking mini. He looks so cool. He comes with an equipment card for his dark sword, but it's uh, almost literally here a double-edged sword because this equipment card says, as long as you're carrying it, you must attack something each turn, otherwise you lose a card. The sword drains your health. It's a cursed sword, right? The ebony blade is cursed. That's how Dark Knight rules. They really nailed the character. This is fabulous. I'm excited. And he's on my list. Check him off. Then we got our first stretch goal villain, Ulysses Claw. And let me tell you how excited I was to see Claw's name pop up here because this was a you know a big name villain that had not been touched at all by the game yet. He was not even like a, a henchman anywhere. So to see Claw made me all the happies. And it's just a simple little mini of just him with his hand cannon. There you go. And apparently he's going to be able to shoot at all different corners of the map. So that's going to be fun. And of course, Ulysses Claw is 100% on my list because he was just a villain that I wanted to see. ka -ching! There's another one. Then we get our second Star Jammer. And... I just got to say this. First of all, he's not on my list because I only know him literally from like one episode of the Silver Surfer cartoon from the 90s. That's my only frame of reference for this guy. And all I remember is his name because his name is Chode. I'm 12 years old, apparently. But Chode is... <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Chode is the muscle of the Star Jammers. He's one of the four members of this group. And here he is. He looks great. He's got these water tokens that he's going to come with. And apparently uh, you can have him hide in the water because he's an aquatic being. And if he's on a space with a water token, he's harder to hit, uh, which is just a neat little thematic thing. And I think those water tokens are going to come into play later. We got Chode. We got two out of the four star jammers. That's great. The one that had me the most excited so far from this whole stretch goal list is my boy Chameleon. He was not even my favorite Spider-Man villain by a long shot. In fact, he's close to the bottom, but he's a big popular Spider-Man villain. We're missing a lot of Spider-Man villains. And lo and behold, here he is. He shows up. Is he on my list? Survey says he's there. Now, I had a video planned that I didn't get around to making yet where I came up with some ideas of how certain villains would work, certain villains I wanted to see, how their gameplay would work. And there were only two villains there in that idea that I was drawing up, and one of them was Chameleon. And it was a very similar thing to what Simon ended up doing. So I'm not saying I'm almost as good as the people who design these games for a living, but I'm also not not saying that. So Chameleon hides amongst crowds. So when you go to punch him, however many people there are there, he gets that amount of tokens and you just kind of have to flip one over every time you attack him. And if it's blank, that means you attacked a random person. And if it's chameleon, that means you actually attacked chameleon. So he's hiding amongst the crowd. And that's very, very similar to what I had going on. I had uh, his win condition was if he fills up every location because he gets to lose himself amongst the crowd. The biggest difference was that in my idea, chameleon had a mask token that would be given to certain heroes throughout the game, kind of like Sabretooth's Hunted token. And as long as you were holding the mask token, Chameleon was disguised as your character. If you wanted to punch Chameleon, you would first have to spend some kind of maybe a heroic action or something to lose the mask token. Otherwise, any damage done to Chameleon would be done to you because he's dressed as you, right? So your friends would think they were dogpiling on him and they would actually hurt you. Uh, I will try to make that video for the other villain I had in mind fast because I want to get it out there before Simon announces this villain hopefully and that villain is one of my favorites, the Hobgoblin. So I had a pretty cool unique idea for how I'd like to see Hobgoblin play out. Very simple stuff. I'll make that video some other time though. In the meantime, we've got Chameleon. What might be the coolest new mini of the bunch? Songbird. Songbird is coming. She has been unlocked and she's got these glorious translucent pink wings. They nailed it. They nailed it with Songbird. When I asked that question during that designer Q&A about the, the translucent fire and water effects and if we'd see more of that, and Helena told me, like, just you wait and see, I think this is what she was talking about because this is something I never would have expected. It looks incredible. Songbird was not on my list because I knew very little about her. I forgot she even existed. But take a look at this, man. This just looks outstanding. Then they took a break from characters to say that we are getting more equipment cards. We all saw this coming. The equipment cards for our season one and two heroes, right? Makes perfect sense. Our core heroes, 
from the first two seasons will have their own equipment cards. There's lots there to see. Of course, Captain America's got a shield. Iron Man's got all his fancy gizmos. Thor's got Mjolnir. Spider-Man's got web shooters. It all works out. It's perfect. And later on, they announced another stretch goal. We are getting more equipment cards for the promo characters from Seasons Yore. So you want some trick arrows for Hawkeye? Boom. You want Magic to have her Vorpal Blade or whatever it's called? She's got it. Equipment cards are catching up to the first two seasons. Exactly like what we all hoped and expected. Beautiful. Moving on. More characters. And next up, another great mini, Titania. Titania was on my list, but I never expected to see her. I really did not expect her to show up. And here she is. She's carrying this giant girder. She looks magnificent. And apparently... Fighting her is going to be kind of similar to fighting Deadpool, uh, where she's so strong and so tough and powerful that you can't beat her. Uh, what they said happens is every time you knock her out, she gets a crisis token and she gets angrier, so she gets more aggressive. And every time she knocks a hero out, they get a KO token. You keep playing until one hero runs out of cards and they can't play any more cards. And then you just count up all the KO tokens and all the crisis tokens. And if there's more crisis, you knock her out more you win. If there's more KO tokens, she knock you out more, she wins. That's how Titania rolls. She also comes with an optional seventh threat card of Absorbing Man as a henchman. And let's just talk about it now. It doesn't come right away next, but Absorbing Man was also a stretch goal that got unlocked, and he is on my list to check him off. And Absorbing Man has a really cool setup where every threat card is a different element and if he's in that location he absorbs that element and it gives him a certain kind of ability. Genius. I love what they did with Absorbing Man. They took a character that could have been really lame and boring and made him really interesting and it sounds like he's going to be super hard to fight. And to match it up because these two kind of have on again off again relationships which is really cool and dramatic. Absorbing Man comes with an optional seventh threat card of Titania that you can use to spice up your game add some flavor make it a little bit harder. In between Titania and Absorbing Man we got Hepzibah our third member of the Star Jammer crew. I didn't know anything about this lady. I'm sure she was in the cartoons. I just forgot all about her, but damn, she looks cool. She's like this white fox kind of thing. She's got a gun. She just looks really cool. She looks like an awesome sci-fi Marvel cosmic character, and I'm glad that she's in the mix. Afterwards, we got what I'm going to admit is probably my least favorite of the characters that have been announced in this campaign so far. Actually, I'll say definitely my least favorite, which is Cyborg Spider-Man. So, okay, he's a, a variation of Spider-Man. He's a cyborg or whatever. Uh, he's got an equipment card too, which is cool. But the only reason that he doesn't excite me that much is, you know, the obvious of him being an alternate skin that's not very exciting to look at to begin with. Uh, we already have way more exciting Spider-Man alts. And if you're going to do a character who's just like a straight up cyborg, why not put Deathlock instead? Because we don't have him yet at all. We, we're good. We got plenty of Spider-Men. We're covered for spider people. Thankfully, after Cyborg Spider-Man, they slid right back into my heart. He's big. He's green. He's Abomination. And he is on my list. Abomination is here. He is huge. He's another great Hulk villain that we can add. Like, the Hulk villains are coming fast now. We got Wrecking Crew. We got Titania and Absorbing Man. Now we got Abomination, Leader in Red Hulk. I know you're coming. And Red She-Hulk would be... Just the icing on that Sunday, as far as I'm concerned. I, Sundays do not have icing. I apologize. But here's Abomination. He looks magnificent. Uh, Simon said he has legendary health, so he might have the most health of any villain, maybe even more than Thanos. He's going to be really tough to take out. The villains sound like they're all going to be super hard this season. Next, we got Patriot, who looks magnificent. I love the old-fashioned shield that he's got, the old-fashioned Captain America shield. Patriot just looks so cool. I didn't have him on my list because I, I can't remember why. I guess the Young Avengers were not super on my radar, but I'm really happy to have Patriot. He looks great. He's one of the coolest looking minis so far, too. Following Patriot was a huge surprise to me, Crimson Dynamo. I didn't even have him on my list, even though I knew about him, because I thought nobody gives a crap about Crimson Dynamo. I was like, there's there's no way. Nobody's going to care about this at all. But we got him. He's here. I have one trading card with this man, two trading cards with this man on him, and now I'm about to have a mini of him. And he's all red, which looks perfect. It suits it. Painters, you've got, you know, you'll have no issue with this guy. We've got an Iron Man villain. Now you can more or less reenact the plot of Iron Man 2 if you want. Rounding out our Star Jammers is, I think you pronounce his name Raza or Reza. I don't know. Reza sounds kind of cool because it kind of sounds like Razor. Fourth Star Jammer. He kind of looks like the Drax the Destroyer of this group. I'm happy. He's a fresh new character. Somebody I didn't know about, but here he is. 
We got him. After that, another person I didn't know anything about is this lady named M, who is a powerful mutant who has this cool kind of thing where she has two forms, M and Penance. And Penance is this big monster who's really powerful and she can do a lot of damage, but she can also damage her allies. So after every villain turn, you choose whether you are in Penance form or M form based on what's going on in the game. It doesn't look like there are two different minis, which you know what, I'm okay with because there's only room for so many minis in a box and I would rather that space be taken up by another fresh character. But I hate to sound like a broken record, but that's just how I feel. And that is where we have ended up in terms of stretch goals. Next on the list coming up is Crossbones. Crossbones is the next character to be unlocked. We have a little ways to go before we get enough money to unlock him. Well, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting him. He's such a henchman kind of villain in my head that I wasn't expecting him to pop up as a, a main villain that you could fight. It's cool to have that variety. And it gives me hope because if Crossbones can be his own villain, Shocker can definitely be his own villain. And so can Scorpion. So bring it in. Bring the love. Bring the Spider-Man love. Continue bringing the Hulk love. I am so pumped by what we have gotten in the first, you know, 20 hours of this campaign. Once they start announcing new expansion boxes, that's when I think we're going to see even bigger boosts and bigger boosts in the uh, the funding. Because even though they, they made their money extremely fast, everybody who was excited to buy this game has probably already done so. So now you're going to see that money counter slow down a bit. So it's the expansion boxes that are going to be exciting and get other new people on board to say, ooh, what's this? Click. And then the stretch goals will go up and up and up because the money counter will be going up and up and up. I assume that's how these things work. This is the first time I followed one from start to finish, but that's just what it looks like to me. So I'm not going to be making these videos every single day to, you know, keep up with what's going on. Maybe every five days or so, come back here to the channel. We'll make a video. We'll see what's come out. We'll see who else we can cross off the list. Uh, I'll get around to making that video about Hobgoblin soon, about how I think Hobgoblin should be played. So stay tuned for that. Until then, folks, I hope you're having as much fun following this campaign as I am. I'll see you all next time for whatever's next in the Master Plan.